right? Scott, I, I wanted to ask you some, we, we've talked before, so we know each other. Now, um, you didn't start out just wanting to go out and film cops. You actually are an artist, and it, could you explain to the sure. viewers what you wanted to do? Sure, you know, it all, it all kind of happened after 9-11 when everybody came suspicious of everybody. If you see something, say something. So now, the day after 9-11, if I'm out with my camera, suddenly I'm the guy, as a military veteran who served my country to, to protect the Constitution, now because of this, I'm the guy who, who flew planes into the building and killed innocent people. Every time I went out to shoot photography, I knew there was about a 95% chance that I was gonna get police interaction, they were gonna demand my ID, I was gonna be threatened with arrest. And I, I just got really upset with that, and one day I just went home and I Googled problems of uh, photographer space in public. And I just, just, I was blown away by how many accounts, stories, videos, just people all over the country were going through the same thing that I was going through. Um, and it, it, it blew me away. And it wasn't, it wasn't just me and it wasn't just the area I lived in. This was nationwide. There was a, a war against photographers. I knew that any time I would go out to take a picture of, of a sunset behind a bridge, I'm, sure that I'm, no, I'm no longer taking a picture of a sunset behind a bridge. I'm now surveilling critical infrastructures for possible terrorist activity. And it, it hurt me in my heart to know that I served my country and now I'm the terrorist. I, I just didn't know how to, how to, what to do with that. And I started noticing that photographers had started videoing their encounters and posting those online, something I would never have done. So essentially, you know, then I started filming the police and the police started reacting violently sometimes. And what, what I think the police have done with all of this, with all this paranoia is they've grown the population of people who film them. This behavior that they don't like being on film, they're growing the population every day. Every time they act out, every time they arrest someone, every time they beat someone, steal their memory cards, like what happened to me in King County Sheriff, uh, King, from King County Sheriff. Every time they do this, another person will see the video and say, this is something I don't, I don't like this. This is something that I'm gonna now take a camera and I'm gonna go find a cop. This is not baiting police. This is not trying to start a fight because if, if a legal action, if completely constitutionally protected, legal activity is baiting police, we need new police or we need new legislation. We need something, something needs to change because legal action should be left alone. A person who's a patriot and a free person should be left alone to do what they gotta do. Absolutely, and 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 I'm I'm not well. I I like to paint and I play um, instruments kind of okay. Um, I love instruments. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, so I know that that artist mentality. Where as we live in one of the most beautiful states in North America, and wanting to go out there and film that, and instead it is taking you down a route of being arrested. You know. Yeah. yeah paranoid in a way you yeah. should say, and and for. All rights and purposes, I could see where it would make you paranoid because they have, they have, you got a bullseye on you at this point. I think all the time, as long as I have a camera on. You know, sometimes I open carry with my camera, sometimes I just have my camera. And what I've noticed, what I've noticed when I'm open carrying is I don't really <laughs> get a whole lot of flack for that. What I get, what I get the most negative attention from law enforcement is right here. Absolutely. They, this records what they do and it holds them accountable and it holds them transparent. Whether it's good or bad, this is what they don't like. They fear this. They got guns. They got guys with guns. They can make a phone call and have 20 more guys with guns come up. I'm outgunned. This, they don't know if I'm live streaming. They don't know who else is seeing. They don't know if I have another person looking. They hate this. It's been my experience anyways. Yeah. Well, as I've, I've mentioned before, you know, I, I think I did it recently and said, you know, there's people that they, there's there's keyboard warriors and then there's people that are willing to get out of their comfort zone and and go out and take action. And you've actually are the exception to the rule because you have taken. I, I love what you do because you you're not. I mean, I know your heart has to be beating. You've been tased. Always. You've been you've. They've hit you with their bicycles. Yes. They push you around every time they see you. The guns cops, on me. the cops, yeah, they pull their guns on you. The cops know who you are. You're targeted now, yet you still continue. So that takes a special kind of human being to do that. And, and it's, it, a lot of us do it, and it's we're trying to change the perception that people think the police, the police aren't here to protect and serve. They're a good boy, the good old boys club. 
Um, that myth is long gone, and I appreciate everything you do. Yeah, thank you. You know, that, that officer-friendly myth disappeared right around the time that everybody had a camera, like on their cell phone. Everyone was able to, to stream their media out for the world to see. I think that officer-friendly myth disappeared when people said, oh, let's hold them accountable. Absolutely. They're here to protect and serve the corporation, not the people. That's, that's the... And, and many of them to to preserve their self-inflated egos to show that you know their, their well, humanity. And you're a good example of what more people should be doing because if one person can have an effect like you do, then imagine you know multiply that by whatever and we win. Step you up. shut them down. Yeah. It, and they'll fight back. But it, you know, it's it's. I'd rather I'd rather be in a fight than be comfortably a slave. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to live in fear yep. of, of my, the people that I pay to enforce the law. I'm not going to live. I'm not going to live in fear of public servants who are answerable to me. They they show up on a scene and they often will have this this mentality that hey, I'm in charge. Mm -hmm. But when I'm a law-abiding citizen, I'm breaking no laws. I'm I'm engaged in completely constitutionally protected activity. I'm in charge. Now you can kick my ass and you can steal my stuff, but you're just a thug. You know, you're just a robber. And what can I do against criminal criminal you know acts like that?